Hello, hello. So today we're going to look at VOR navigation. Fortunately, it's not as difficult or as complicated as you might think. If you've seen my ADF video, then you'll notice a lot of similarities with VOR navigation. So let's get into it. So what is a VOR? A VOR is a type of radio station, much like the NDB. VOR is short for VHF, Omnidirectional Radio Range. I won't go into too much detail about how it works, but let's look at the main difference between a VOR and an NDB. So the NDB that we looked at before is a radio station which sends out a signal like this, in all directions constantly. A VOR, however, sends out two separate signals. The first one, the master signal, is a quick pulse which is sent out in all directions. The secondary signal is a highly directional signal which rotates clockwise very quickly. These are timed differently so that the master pulse signal is sent out first, followed by the secondary spinning signal. By recognising the time difference between these two signals, an aircraft can determine what its bearing is relative to the VOR station, and this is displayed in the cockpit. One thing to note, the bearing that we get when dealing with VOR navigation is known as a radial. So in this example, the aircraft is on a radial of 120 degrees from the VOR station. So the instrument we use with VOR navigation is one of these. This can be called a VOR indicator or a course deviation indicator, CDI for short. It has several components that we'll need to be aware of. First, around the outside, we have a rotating compass called an Omni Bearing Selector, or OBS for short. In the middle, we have two lines or needles. The vertical line shows us our deviation, how far off our intended flight path we are, and the horizontal one is used for landing, but we won't be using that in this video. You will also see two little arrows at the bottom which point up or down. These are your to and from flags. These will indicate whether we're flying to or away from the VOR station. You also have a secondary VOR indicator which works exactly the same but is simply missing the horizontal needle. So let's look at how to use it all. So the first thing we need to do is get the details for the VOR station we want to use. So we're going to be using Inverness again. So jump into the map, double click the blue VOR icon and note down the frequency and the Morse code identifier. So now we're in the plane, what we need to do is tune that uh, radio frequency into our NAV1 radio and then make it the active frequency. So I'm going to do that just now and um, hopefully we'll get a signal. So this is 109.2, let's make it active. And you'll see that the needle on the VOR indicator here moved, so we've definitely got a VOR signal but we need to confirm if it's the right one or not. So I'm just going to listen out onto the NAV1 radio and listen out for that Morse code. And that's definitely Inverness. Okay, so once we've confirmed that, to find our position relative to the VOR, our current position, what we need to do is we need to do two things. We need to turn the OBS here until we have the vertical needle running up and down along the center and also until we have the um, from flag showing. So that's when the arrow is pointing down. So what we'll do is we'll start spinning it around. Okay, so you can see we've got the needle centered there, but the wrong flag is showing. That is showing our direction to the VOR, which we don't want. We want to find out our kind of radial from the VOR. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep spinning it around until I find that. Okay, and there we go. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the vertical needle running up and down along the center and the from flag showing so the arrow at the bottom is pointing down. So looking at the uh, top of the OBS here that looks like the one a radial of uh, if we're going to be exact I would say 107, 108 
So, to fly directly away from the VOR station, all we would simply do is turn our heading to match what we can see on the VOR there. So, turn the plane now to that heading. And now we're flying directly away from the VOR. One thing to be aware of is that the radial that you fly on, um, or the the in, sorry the uh, VOR indicator here, it doesn't is not affected by the aircraft's heading. All it is doing is simply showing us our position in relation to the VOR station. If you remember back when we had a look at the ADF, every time we turned the plane, the ADF needle would swing back and forth depending on which way we turned. The VOR indicator doesn't do anything like that, and I'll show you just now. So if we do quite a dramatic turn to the right, you can see that the VOR indicator isn't moving at all because it's simply showing us our position relative to the VOR station. Let's turn back that way. So now we know how to fly away from a VOR station, let's look at how we would fly to a station. Um, it's actually quite simple, all we simply do is we look for the opposite of what we've got on the VOR indicator at the moment. So what I mean by that is we need to find the reciprocal or the opposite um, direction to our radial. So if we have a look here, so let's say rough, roughly we're on a, a radial of 110. So the, what we need is we need the reciprocal of that which would be plus or minus 180 degrees or you can simply have a look at the arrow at the bottom of the indicator here and that shows that the reciprocal heading or this reciprocal direction would be 290. So what we need to do is turn the OBS around until we bring 290 to the top and you can see that we have the needle is centered again and now if you have a look at the flag at the bottom, that's our two flag, so that is showing us the direction to the VOR station. And then all we would simply do to fly to it is just turn the plane to that heading as well. And again you see we're turning around like 180 degrees and you see that the VOR indicator doesn't really move at all because we're still on that kind of radial uh, away from it. One thing to to yeah to remember is that when we're flying or when we're talking in terms of moving away from the VOR station, we fly on what's called a radial or the the kind of imaginary line that you draw away from the VOR station is the radial. However, when you're flying to a VOR station, it's known as flying a bearing to the station. Um, I don't know why that is. Um, I just done a little bit of research before I did this video, and I found that that was a thing. So, um, if there's any real-world pilots out there um, who can explain why, please do because I would love to know. So, now you can see that we're kind of flying. Let's just adjust that just for the purposes of the video. So, yeah, so we're flying now um, a bearing of two nine zero back to the um, VOR station there. One other thing that you can do if you want to get a, a more kind of exact picture of where your position is, is you can actually use the DME down here. And you can see that at the moment we're 22.8 nautical miles away from the Inverness VOR. So using that you can kind of measure on a map to determine exactly, well not exactly where you are but almost exactly where you are. Because if you remember, the DME will measure the slant distance from the aircraft to the VOR station. It's not the distance over the ground. Not a massive problem because the distance over the ground won't be too much different, but it's just there's, there's a difference there that you need to be aware of. So that's flying away from, an, or di sorry, directly away from a VOR station and directly to a VOR station. Let's say, however, that we wanted to fly a specific. Um, bearing to a station. Like let's say that we wanted to approach the station directly from the east and flying directly west over the VOR station. What we need to do is we need to come over to our OBS um, indicator or our VOR indicator again here and adjust it. 
to the direction that we want to fly. So if we want to fly directly west towards the VOR station, we simply adjust that until we have west pointing at the top there. Now you can see that the um, needle deflected to the right there. What that's telling us is that our um, sort of intended flight pla path, that bearing, which will be 270 into the VOR station, is on the right hand side of the plane as w uh, uh, com compared to where we were positioned in the world right now. So what we would need to do is turn to the right to intercept that um, that kind of bearing. So I'll do that just now. And I'll probably need to cut the video until we get a bit closer. But what we pardon me, what we would do is turn to the right to intercept that bearing, wait for the needle to move back towards the center. And then once it's moved back to the center, we return onto that um, bearing of two seven zero degrees and follow it all the way into the via water station. So I'll probably cut the video here just to save time and you'll see what, what I mean. Okay, so it's a couple of minutes after um, where I cut the video, and you can see now that the needle is slowly moving back towards the centre, so that means that we're getting closer to that intended flight path of 270, or flying due west, back towards the VOR station. And we can confirm that we're flying, or it's going to the station because it's got the 2 flag at the bottom there. So just before that centres itself up, we'll turn over to a heading of 270 and hopefully we won't fly past there which I fear we might do slightly <laughs> no, I think we're okay there so you can see in there now that we've got the um, the needle centered we've got the 2 flag there so we know that we're flying to the uh, uh, VOR station and our heading is 270, so now we're flying directly to the VOR station. So that is how you would, um, you know, plan to fly a specific bearing to the VOR station, and then turn the aircraft and position, sorry, position yourself on that bearing. Okay, so just following off um, our our kind of position from our last video. Uh, what I'm going to talk about quickly also is correcting for wind drift. So, uh, much like what I did with the ADF video, um, I'm going to be flying directly west towards the Inverness VOR. However, I've got the wind blowing quite strongly from north to south. And you can see, and just so I can sort show you sorry, how to uh, account for wind drift. So if you look at the VOR indicator at the moment, uh, we started the flight pretty much where we left off on the last clip. And um, you can see now that the um, vertical needle is moving to the right, so that means that we're getting pushed left away from that kind of intended flight path there. So what we need to do is simply, as we did before with the ADF indicator, is use bracketing to account for the wind drift there. So the needle is deflecting to the right, that means that our flight path is on the right, so we need to turn right into the wind. So we're going to turn 30 degrees into the right, which will be quite a sharp angle there. And if you also look at the DME, we're getting a bit closer to a Vanessa there, so um, so the needle will be... It works like the ADF, the closer you are to the VOR station, the, the faster the needle will move because it gets a bit more sensitive, so uh, that's just one thing you need to be aware of. So we've turned 30 degrees into the wind there and you can see that the needle is coming back to centre so that means that 30 degrees is going to be enough of a wind correction angle and this is much better than the ADF indicator because you're not worrying about if I turn 30 degrees this way and the indicator is pointing 30 degrees does that mean this or that there's, n there's none of that kind of rubbish with, with the VOR indicator all you're simply doing is making your wind correction angle and then just watching to see what the um, the vertical needle does so you don't have to worry about yeah, like I said, 20 degrees this way or 15 degrees that way or, you know, is it the same direction or opposite? All you want to do is just keep the needle centred here. So, we've turned 30 degrees into the wind and the needle's coming back, so that means that we're going to re-intercept that, um, 
sort of bearing of 270 it back into the VOR station. So, like I said before with bracketing, all you do is you simply just kind of correct left and right, try and reduce the um, the angle down until you find the kind of the ideal angle where you can fly along the um, the bearing there, and the wind will just keep pushing the plane sideways straight along that bearing there. So we're back on now. So I'm going to correct. 10 degrees to the left so our total correction angle is now 20 degrees into the wind and we'll just see um, if that keeps us sort of on on that bearing or not maybe we'll get lucky and maybe it'll be alright fingers crossed <laughs> I've got a suspicion the needle's moving slightly to the left albeit very slowly. Yep, yeah, so it's moving slightly to the left, so um, 20 degrees is still too much of an angle into the wind, so I'm going to drop it down to 15. And 15 might be just about right. And what you could do is you could drop it down to 10 and I would suspect that the needle will kind of move right and come back into dead center uh, but I won't worry about that unless I see the needle move again so yeah in case I didn't mention it at the start of this clip yeah the, the wind is going to be blowing from our right to the left so um, I think 15 might still be a bit too much but as I said because we're getting quite close to the um, VOR station now, we're only six and a half nautical miles out, the needle will be quite sensitive to any movements so so I would hesitate to, to make any kind of drastic corrections f from now on. So yeah that's how you correct for, for wind drift by using the VOR indicator, as I said it's much easier than the ADF, all you're focused on is just keeping the needle in the centre of the uh, the indicator there. So one other benefit of using VOR navigation over ADF navigation is that you can use VOR navigation in conjunction with the autopilot. So if you have a look here, I've got the plane set for um, Inverness and we've got it all set up to fly a bearing of 040 degrees to, Inverness, to the Inverness VOR. Now we're currently flying north, so we're going to intercept that uh, bearing there. What we would do is first of all check to make sure that this nav slash GPS switch is set to nav because that makes sure that the plane is using navigation radios rather than the, the GPS signal. And then next we would simply just activate the nav button on the autopilot like so. Now at the moment the plane is going to hold our current heading because we're not quite at the bearing yet but as soon as we get close enough the plane will automatically disable the heading hold and turn onto the uh, the VOR bearing there, which should happen any second now. Don't let me down, please! Come on, come on, do it! Don't make me look like an idiot. There we go. So if you have a look at the autopilot now, you can see that the heading hold has been disabled automatically by the um, the autopilot and the plane is starting to turn right onto that bearing of 040 degrees. Now the good thing is that you don't have to be set up to intercept the bearing. Um, if you choose a bearing and then hit the nav button, the plane will automatically turn to a heading where it will intercept that bearing and then obviously once it reaches the kind of intended flight path it will then turn onto that and follow that all the way into the VOR station. So that's about it for VOR navigation. In my next video we're going to use the VOR instrument again but look at how to use it for ILS approaches and landings. As always if you have any questions ask away. Many thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.